I'm going to talk about the last item now, and it is the internal rate of return. And this one is used fairly often, uh, also called the IRR. You won't be required to calculate this because you need to use a Excel spreadsheet or a specialized calculator, but you should know the concepts of it. This is the uh, discount rate at which NPV is zero. And essentially what this is sort of, it's, it's an estimate of the rate of return of the project. And that's why it's used so often, because it's sort of easy to understand. Um, you just quote a percentage and everyone understands it. So if that rate of return is higher than your discount rate, then you would go ahead and do the project because it would be a positive NPV. Um, there's a couple of negatives with an uh, internal rate of return. Uh, one, it, it doesn't tell you the dollar value of the return, it tells you the percentage. Uh, the second is in unique cases, it can give you two answers. If the cash flows change directions, then it gives you two mathematical answers, which doesn't make sense. But one that is a legitimate problem uh, is what is addressed by the modified IRR. Because what the IRR assumes is that your returns are reinvested at the IRR. And that may be reasonable, but not always. So if you are doing a project where the return is 12% a year, and your discount rate is 10. Um, that's probably reasonable that any profit is going to be reinvested at 12. It's not too far off. But what if you had something extreme like 100% a year it was a return on the project? Then what you're assuming is that that profit keeps reinvesting at 100% every year. And you may not be able to find other projects that return that. So the modified IRR assumes that returns are reinvested at the discount rate, which is more reasonable uh, rather than return, let's say profits. Okay. At the discount rate. So if I had in my example, the 100% profit and the 10% discount rate, then at the end of year one, the profit gets reinvested at 10%, which you should be able to do. You should be able to find another project that uh, hovers around the hurdle rate for the company. Now, if we put it all together, which method is the best? The answer is really there isn't one. And I'm gonna, uh, let me try to show you using the table that I have here. Okay, so I had to convert it back to the white screen because that's the only way I can show it. If you decide that you're just going to look at net present value, uh, th this is, or you know, which project would you not do? You would not do anything with a negative net present value. So this one is a, a no. Everything else technically is something you would do if you had unlimited funding. But companies don't have unlimited funding. So how would you prioritize it? If you looked at NPV, the first one would be C because it's the highest return. The second one would be F. And the third one would be E. Uh, what if you looked at internal rate of return? Then the first one would be D. The second one would be C. And the third one would be E. So you can see you get different answers. Well, you don't get a conflict of one recommending a negative pro product. You will change the order of it. So there's no mathematical answer as to which one you should use. It's a combination of qualitative judgment and, um, uh, and knowledge of your business as well.